Hello, welcome back to the video series for Geography 300, Geographical Data Analysis at WVU. We are continuing now with interpretation of GWR, Geographically Weighted Regression. As I had in the previous video, the, now we are getting, for every single observation, its own local coefficients, its own local r squared, its own local p-values for all of these, for especially for the local coefficient. It's actually not directly computed within ArcGIS, so um, for either the local coefficient, for the p-values for the local coefficients or the local r squared, we have a reasonable way of estimating the p-value for the coefficients, though, just not the r squared. But we may have then we have our value for Preston County. If it was say a 70 kilometer radius uh, distance threshold for defining a neighborhood, that's saying any county inside this circle only those counties contribute to that regression. <clears throat> so Mon County, using a slightly different regression, because this to the uh, to the west of Preston County, its neighborhood extends that much further to the west, loses some in the east. And we get its value. Maybe Marion County's value is pretty similar to Mon County and it shows up the same in the map. Taylor County, further south, even more so. We can have ourselves a situation, even, where if I now look at the same set of variables and go to the southern part of the state, it may well be a negative coefficient if this is positive. And so, say, Mingo County and its neighbors, that becomes a negative relationship. We have to make sure when we interpret this for our coefficients as well as for our squared, that we bear in mind that neighborhood. And when saying, the main thing really is when saying, for to say this is a strong relationship for Taylor County. You're not actually saying something just about Taylor County. You're saying something about Taylor County and its neighborhood. Likewise, for Mingo County, you're making a statement here about Mingo County and its neighborhood. It's sort of the same way we would look at the local Moran's eye clusters. The bright blue, the bright red counties, and were the centers of the low, low, and high, high clusters. By that average, that you could also say the counties surrounding those clusters also on average were high to make that cluster relationship or local autocorrelation relationship work. The local regression here is going to need the neighbors to work. And so you're making statements not just about a particular county. So you don't, wouldn't say the coefficients 
within Mon County is X. It's the coefficient for Mon County's neighborhood is X. So it's an interpretation thing to be careful with. Likewise for the R squared, the local R squared, it will tell you it's a strong relationship in one area, a weak relationship in the other. But you're going to be seeing trends and making statements about the parts of the state to say in the northern part of the state the relationship is strong, in the southern part of the state the relationship is weak. It so happens uh, that the that neighboring counties, their coefficients are probably going to be similar. Their R squares are going to be pretty similar. So you probably will see those general trends to be able to make statements about more like regions as opposed to individual counties anyway. And that will help with the interpretation. So that's the main interpretation consideration for geographically weighted regression. Make sure you recognize the local neighborhood context for those coefficients, those local key values, those local R squares. We'll now look at a couple of the limitations that come up with geographically weighted regression that aren't as much a concern with everything else. So they're unique to GWR and important to bear in mind. That will be the next video. So thank you for watching. And as always, if you have questions, ask in class, ask by email, and I'll see you at the next video.